All right. We're here with JT Von Lunen, co-founder of Gear to Grow. Thanks a lot for coming on the show, JT. Thank you. And so Gear to Grow provides gear to other organizations that then help people get outdoors. So can you give us an idea as to the types of gear that you're usually donating? Sure. Uh, so the Gear to Grow program, uh, the idea is to find uh, other nonprofit organizations that are getting people involved in outdoor recreation, conservation, or education. So uh, we're a, a 501c3 nonprofit, and we look to support other uh, 501c3 nonprofit organizations. Uh, and so we're giving all sorts of gear for different projects. Uh, a lot of the gear that we're giving out is, uh, at least this time of year, is jackets. It's snow pants, um, snowshoes. We don't have a lot of snowshoes, but we were able to get some for uh, one of our groups that we support. Um, but it, it really depends on the season and what the programs are. Um, some groups do swimming programs, so we're able to get them swimming trunks, uh, mm -hmm. bathing suits, that sort of thing. Uh, some do biking. We were able to get them bike helmets, bike gloves, bike shirts. Uh, so it, it really depends on what, what the group's uh, you know focus is and what what we can actually provide. We get a lot of clothing right now, uh, not as many hard goods like tents, sleeping bags, and backpacks. We do get those, but they're, okay. you know, they're sought after, so we try to allocate that, that sort of uh, gear to each group that uh, we're supporting so it's fair. Gotcha, gotcha. So where, where are you guys getting all this gear? What are your main sources for, for acquiring it and you know all that stuff? Sure. Uh, our main donor right now is backcountry.com. Um, they've pledged to give us about uh, $40,000 of gear a month mm. uh, in kind donation. Wow. Um, so a lot of that is coming from, uh, they have what's called a 100% unconditional guarantee policy. Well, they'll take returns. And uh, it just so happens that we kind of fit the need of, uh, you know, they get things that they can't really resell and okay. they like to get that back out into okay. the, the outdoor community. And so we're kind of the conduit taking that gear, you know, and sometimes it's, it's not bad at all. It's almost, some of it's brand new, hmm. just different, uh, you know, things that are some, we fix gear. Uh, we have some of the groups that we support will fix the gear. Maybe a zipper's hmm. broken or a backpack that's, you know, a strap came undone, needs to be fixed. So a lot of it's very minor things that, you know, they can't resell. They're not in the business of fixing things. So they, they're able to donate to us and we're able to get it, you know, almost immediately right out into the, uh, you know, to the groups we're supporting. That's good uh, but stuff. But we also are supported by, yeah, we're supported by Cascade Designs. Okay. Um, Decine, Mountain Khakis. Um, let's see, Evolve sent us some climbing shoes. Neat. Uh, Metolius sent us some stuff. So, you know, there's, and sorry if I missed any brands out there. <laughs> hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, we've, we've been getting, you know, slow, we're slowly getting more and more uh, donations from each group. We've only been doing this a year. Okay. And uh, it's been a great help to have backcountry.com supporting us. Uh, one, for just the baseline, uh, basically, inventory we're getting each month. Yeah. And two, just the name recognition that, you know, backcountry is supporting a good cause uh, and, you know, other groups will get behind that. Absolutely. So you guys have been doing this for a year and uh, it brings to mind the question, why, what gave you the idea to start this in the first place? What was the inspiration? Well, uh, I have a, another project I work on where I review outdoor gear uh, on a website uh, called National Outdoors okay. and I was getting a lot of gear to review and uh, I didn't know what to do with it. I decided, well, I need to maybe donate this uh, to somebody. All right. And I looked around and I thought, well, I don't know where I'm going to donate that. And then uh, we were able to put together a nonprofit. Um, and we're looking for uh, ways, but there's two, this, there's a, a lot of the genesis here, but uh, yeah. Corey Kirkwood, the other founder, mm -hmm. uh, was interested in creating a, uh, a, a nonprofit entity that was using business to uh, solve social and environmental problems. So mm -hmm. instead of going out and uh, trying to fundraise, what we tried to do is create a sustainable business around what we're doing. And so taking those donations initially from the gear that I was getting, it was very, I mean, small compared to what we do now. Yeah. But it started with that, just kind of, you know, and slowly we had, uh, 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 um, got involved with some of our small donations uh, and it just kind of worked up from there. But we 
so the idea was basically there's there's a lot of gear out there in the outdoor world that is you know maybe it's held up in overstock or it's damaged goods yeah. uh, but regardless of the status of that inventory there's still people that are in total need of this gear mm -hmm. and just as soon as we started doing this uh, one of the groups we support is called City Wild uh, over in Denver okay and they take basically underserved youth in the Denver metro area you know hiking um, climbing those mm -hmm. type of things and they come and they don't have anything they don't have coats they don't have backpacks they don't have climbing shoes right uh, so you know, they, they would take anything we had and they were very very happy to, to get that gear and it's good high quality gear it's just you know maybe there's a slight flaw maybe there's nothing wrong so there's a huge opportunity and we still have some of the largest nonprofit groups in the country mm -hmm. uh, leave no trace and uh, you know National Ability Center they have you know a huge overhead for their staff and the or in their programs but they don't have a lot left over for gear and that's kind of the need mm -hmm. we're filling gotcha. is getting this gear into their hands so so kind of a roundabout way to yeah. answer that question yeah leave no trace city wild what are a few other organizations you guys support um, let's see, we have the, yeah, Leave No Trace, City Wild, Big City Mountaineers, okay. SOS Outreach. Um, those are some of the bigger groups, uh, okay. Bay Area Wilderness Training, Outdoor yeah. Outreach. Yeah. Um, let's see, there's the, uh, Explore here in Utah, Four yeah. Corners Outdoor School. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I know there's a list on see. your website, which is geartogrow.com. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, putting me on the spot here. No, we can yeah, we can send to people website, to the site to look at all the details. Um, so, you know, how do you guys decide which organizations one to work with and then how much gear to give each of them? Yeah, that that's always that's always difficult. Okay. Um, we you know, initially when we set this up, I had gone and, you know, to the outdoor retailer show and met some of the these nonprofits that we I call the pilot program. We had about five groups that we'd support. We still do, mm -hmm. uh, and they were all like I said, some of the bigger nonprofits, really to add legitimacy to our program. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, you know, people send requests, and really, it's it's kind of a we we've set up a, a form now that the the groups will fill out and they'll complete uh, what I call their wish list. And okay. so they we say you know here's ten sleeping bags. Uh, backpacks, clothing, boots, uh, other goods, you know, what do you need? Fill that on a piece of paper and then, you know, we'll, we see whatever all the groups need and we'll allocate that accordingly and make sure, you know, X group gets, you know, five, let's say we have 20 stoves, someone gets five stoves, mm -hmm. five stoves, five stoves, you know, that needs the stoves. Gotcha. So it, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process and sometimes we get requests that are, kind of random that, hey, I need, you know, a bunch of sandals. Well, we had a bunch of sandals we didn't know what to do with, and that purse, that group just happened to get all those sandals because we had them in inventory. Yeah. So it, it, it depends. And uh, so sometimes, you know, we were not able to fill requests. I had a request for some snowshoes, actually a lot of requests, and MSR had given us uh, some of the prototypes um, of the new uh, Flash snowshoe that's out. It's pretty cool. Oh, cool. So we got about a dozen of those. That's all we got this year. And uh, the first group that asked for them got them. So that's yep. kind of how it works. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the people that are most directly impacted by your efforts, the, the end users of the gear, are, are they, would they usually be the kind of people that wouldn't otherwise have opportunities to get outdoors? Or what, what kind of people are, are being directly impacted? Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, a lot of the groups that we're supporting are also working with underserved uh, communities. Okay. Uh, in major metropolitan areas, you know, Boston, uh, you know, uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Denver, Salt mm -hmm. Lake. Um, you know, and that's that that's growing. Mm -hmm. We also have groups that are taking people that are um, have different uh, disabilities. Whether there's a group called Rivers of Recovery that takes uh, men mm -hmm. and women who come back from Afghanistan and Iraq that have okay. uh, PTSD, they take them fly fishing mm -hmm. and they, you know, it's, it's kind of a better therapy than sitting in a room with a bunch of people trying to work this out. They go fishing and sit around the campfire and kind of, you know, talk and can work through some of those issues, you know, in the outdoors, which is awesome. Yeah. So there, there's a variety of groups we're supporting. I, uh, I would say that they're, you know, they're underserved in some sort of way. Okay. Uh, you know, the, okay. 
that um, whether they, they can't afford the gear or they uh, don't have access to certain types of gear, mm. um, it, it varies. But yeah. uh, you know that, that's kind of the goal of Gear to Grow is the we want to grow outdoor participation, grow you know basically help grow the outdoor industry. Mm -hmm. And use of gear by you know introducing this gear to groups that probably would otherwise not be able to get it or have a hard time getting it, yeah. or uh, you know can't get enough of it. One of the, even uh, let's see, uh, one of the groups I, I don't want to mention in my name because I can't remember which one, but okay, their climbing shoes were from the early seventies. Ah, <laughs> nice. And we gave them about thirty or forty pair of climbing shoes to update their you know shoes this yeah. this year. Now these were, you know, somewhat used, and they had to resole some of them. Okay. But still, I mean, there's a good home for this stuff that yeah. you know most people just discard their old stuff, and there's there's room for that. Yeah. So, so you're not looking only for new gear. You're, are you also willing to accept donations from people that might have used gear that's in I, good shape, or is that really not your? No, thing? no, no. We're 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 strictly working with, okay. uh, you know. The business level, not not the public level. Gotcha. Uh, so we're looking for uh, not individual retail. Yeah. Yeah, retailers, manufacturers, distributors that are looking to you know get rid of their uh, or, or donate their inventory um, for a good cause. So it's gotcha. good for their cause marketing, mm -hmm. uh, but also you know they can allows them to, to expense that as a tax write off because we're a nonprofit. But it's going mm -hmm. to a good cause and getting more people involved in outdoor recreation. Yeah, uh, gear that they'd otherwise you know what I say is you know stuff that you'd rather uh, donate than liquidate mm -hmm. uh, is a good way to say it. Um, Absolutely. So. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's it's difficult enough. We don't have a huge staff to deal with all the, you know, if we were to, maybe someday we'd take it from, you know, the public, but it's a lot easier to deal with uh, mm -hmm. just one contact uh, point mm -hmm. for, you know, a bunch of different uh, donors, so. Right, right. Very cool. So for companies or brands that might see this and are, are interested in learning more about what you do, what would be the best way for them to, to reach out to you guys? Uh, the best way uh, is well. There's a couple of things. If mm -hmm. they want to see, you know, kind of the impact we're making, we do. Our website's a little bit behind, but our Facebook page, uh, it's uh, Gear to Grow on Facebook, has okay. a lot of the pictures. Okay. Um, that that's kind of the way we're interacting with uh, or getting feedback from the the groups that we're supporting. Is cool. uh, posting pictures and stories on Facebook. Uh, that's the first place to look. And then you can always go to our website and, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, you'll see some of the groups we support and um, mm -hmm. my contact information's on there. Um, and either they can email or call me. Everything's on our website. So. Good deal. And uh, we're going to have a booth at the Outdoor Retailer Show right. <laughs> in, uh, right. next week. Uh, booth number 60070 up in the nonprofit area by okay. the uh, North Face room. So if they want to stop by there, uh, we'll be there. So. Very cool. Very cool. So what kind of things... Should people look for from you guys down the road? What what are your what are your big goals for for this year? The biggest goal I have this year is to add more donors. It's okay. been surprisingly uh, easy to get beneficiary groups that mm -hmm. we're supporting, and you know we're we're trying to streamline the process a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in our first year of operation, we went from supporting five groups to forty five groups. Wow! And uh, you know. Taking, you know, we we went from a small storage unit to a bigger storage unit to a warehouse mm. in about six months. Yep. Uh, so now it, it's just trying to, you know, get a grasp on, you know, how this is working and getting feedback from the groups we're supporting, and how we can make things more efficient. So there's two things: we're always looking for new donors, mm -hmm. and we want to make the the donation process uh, a little easier for the groups we're supporting. Gotcha. Um, and gotcha. you know, we we don't really want to say no to anybody, but. Uh, you know, at this point, we still have enough gear that we can get a, some things figured out. Um, but it really, we really need more donors to help. Uh, you know, fill the gaps in like tents and sleeping bags and uh, okay. backpacks. Those are everybody needs those things. And surprisingly, um, Backcountry.com sells a lot of clothing. Yeah. And so we get a lot of uh, clothing. You know, jackets, yep. pants, and uh, so yep. the groups we're supporting are very happy with those kind of things. You know, we get base layers, not yeah. cotton layers. You know. Unfortunately, some of these people, they don't know what they're getting into, so they come with a sweatshirt and right. shorts, and it's going up in the mountains in Colorado or Utah. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're able to provide them with uh, high-quality gear that's going to last a while. Yep. Um, and, you know, we're always – clothing is uh, always a must. It's on everybody's list. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of shoes, boots, that type of thing. Yep. But, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely um, 
always a need for gear, and we can always find a home for it. The most random things, um, you know, we can, believe it or not, find somewhere to donate or some group that needs them. So I bet, I bet. Well, very cool, very cool. And I know you're in your warehouse now, and, uh, you know, if you want to tell us a little bit about kind of the operation in there and some of the stuff behind you, that might be neat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let me step aside, and uh, hopefully I can kind of move the camera enough that we're not... Let's see here. So <laughs> where this uh, large group of boxes is over here is where we put all the incoming donations. Um, okay. So a lot of the donations that we're getting, um, you know, we're not particular on how we get them. As long uh -huh. as they get here, that's yep. fine. Uh, Backcountry.com, fortunately, is in uh, Salt Lake here. So uh, we're able to get those ah. donations uh, and bring them over to the warehouse. Very cool. But, you know, sometimes we get uh, donations that come from out of state, uh, Mm -hmm. So until we can sort things, we put everything in our receiving area. Uh, and then uh, right in front of me here is, uh, and I apologize, it's a little messy in here. We just did a sort today. That's all right. Yesterday. It's but messy there, in here too. We just pushed it out to the side. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you, know, you can see all the, the shoes we have. There's a variety of shoes. Uh, we have yep. street shoes. We got hiking boots. We got that kind of stuff. So we have a real long table here, and we'll open a box on the table. Uh -huh. uh, see what's in the box, uh, you know, and then uh, right here we have our boxes that we're sorting into. Okay. So what we'll do okay. is take whatever, you know, we have things labeled watches, climbing gear, street clothes, mm. uh, base layers, all kinds of cookware, all kinds of stuff like that. Gotcha. So those yeah. those type of things is what we're sorting into. And once they're sorted there, we'll go through our wish list and see what groups need what and uh, bring uh, – these boxes are getting ready to go out for a donation. Cool. And we, we actually have over capacity of coats right now, so they're kind of – that's the rest of our warehouse here. They're, they're kind of sitting there ready to get donated. Gotcha. But, uh, we just didn't have form everywhere. So um, – and over here, uh, kind of off in the distance there, there's a table filled with uh, sunglasses. Uh, okay. Ski binding on there. You can see that we get a lot of gear that we're trying to fix. Uh, so we get, you know, random sunglasses that are broken. We can get the parts and put them back together. Um, watches, you know, little things like that. So that's kind of our area that we fix. We also fix uh, sleeping pads, sleeping bags, oh. coats, um, that kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, that's another thing. If there's a group out there that's interested in helping us fix stuff, Hmm. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. We get a lot of coats that are uh, very high quality, um, but they just, the zippers don't work on them. Oh, uh, and that, that's tough. That's a tough thing to fix, you know. Yeah. So what do you do with those now? Uh, we are donating them to groups that say they'll fix them. Oh, okay, cool. So, organization that says, yeah, we'll take your, you know, uh, we have groups that or someone will fix them for us. Gotcha. Oh, uh, that's what. And if something that's got a minor tear or uh, a broken zipper on the side or mm -hmm. something that's not major, we'll, we'll be able to donate those. Gotcha. Uh, but the main zippers are tough because they uh, obviously are tough to fix. Mm. And the jacket's uh, pretty much useless without that zipper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Well, good deal, JT. Very cool operation you guys have over there. And uh, hopefully some people see this and, uh, you know, decide that they want some more information on what you guys are doing. I think it's very cool helping people get outdoors that wouldn't be able to do so otherwise. Um, you know, I, I, can definitely, uh, I can definitely see the need for that. Um, and uh, we appreciate you coming on the show. Okay. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. And uh, as always, we are Camping Gear TV. I'm Josh. This is JT. And we'll see you next time.